Welcome back everyone. Today we learn about genetic diagrams. In this video we will be looking at how to draw genetic diagrams, how to predict certain phenotypic ratio and how to interpret various genetic diagrams. First, let's look at how to construct a genetic diagram. First we need to define the alleles. Let capital letter T be the dominant allele for tall. Let lowercase letter T be the recessive allele for short. First we have to state the parental phenotype and genotype. Let's say one of the parent is tall and the other parent is short, and that they are homozygous. Their genotype would be both capital T and both lowercase t. The gametes are represented in a circle and each allele is placed in a circle as shown. During fetalization there would be new combinations of alleles from each parent and this is how the pairing is done. Pay attention to how the red lines are connected and how the various genotype are obtained for the F1 generation. Based on the F1 genotype, we can now write down the phenotype of the F1 generation. For this example, all the F1 offsprings have the tall phenotype. After the F1 generation comes the F2 generation. From the previous slide we know that all the F1 generation are all tall and they are all heterozygous. As such the F1 phenotype, genotype and gametes are as such. After fertilization we have the genotype of the F2 generation. As can be seen there is one F2 offspring homozygous for tall, two F2 offsprings heterozygous for tall and one offspring homozygous for short. Therefore the phenotypic ratio is three tall as to one short. Now that we know how to construct a genetic diagram, there are three phenotypic ratios that we must remember as they can be very useful for us. We will continue to use the same example of short and tall for all three scenarios. In the first scenario where one parent is homozygous dominant and the other parent is homozygous recessive, the genetic diagram is as such. The phenotypic ratio of the F1 generation would all be the same and all offsprings are heterozygous. In the second scenario where both parents are heterozygous the genetic diagram is as such. The phenotypic ratio of the F1 generation would be 3 is to 1, with 3 belonging to that of the dominant allele. In this case it would be 3 tall is to 1 short. In the last scenario where one parent is heterozygous and the other is homozygous recessive, the genetic diagram is as such. The phenotypic ratio of the F1 generation would be 1 is to 1, hence an equal distribution of phenotype. Do note that should the other parental genotype be unknown, crossing it with a homozygous recessive can let us determine what is the unknown parental genotype based on the phenotypic ratio of the offsprings. This is known as the test cross. Also note that sometimes the observed ratio and the expected ratio differ from one another and this occurs when the sample size is small hence sample is not random. Now we will look at the ABO blood groups. As we explore the ABO blood groups we will cover on codominance and multiple alleles. We know that there are four types of blood group, blood group A, B, A, B and O. There are three gene alleles responsible for the blood groups and they are as shown. Since this is unlike what we have seen so far whereby two allele are responsible for a particular phenotype, this is known as multiple alleles. Allele IA and IB are dominant alleles, whereas IO is the recessive allele. How can there be two dominant alleles and what would happen if both are expressed? The answer is that there would be codominance. Both IA and IB would be equally expressed and thus give rise to blood group AB. Here are the genotypes of each blood group. Now let's see an example of how a genetic diagram for blood group can be constructed. Let's say we have a heterozygous parent of blood group A and a heterozygous parent of blood group B. The F1 generation would have an equal chance of being blood group A, B, AB or O. This does not follow the ratio we have studied previously but that is because multiple alleles are involved here. Finally we will look at the determination of sex in humans with the aid of the genetic diagram. Over here is the karyotype of a male and female. As you can see all the chromosomes are pretty much similar in males and females except for chromosome 23. That is the sex chromosome and it is different in males and females. 
In males the sex chromosome is made up of X and Y. In females the sex chromosome are both made up of X chromosome. The Y chromosome is identified as the shorter one. It is important to realize that there are equal chances of an individual to be either a male or female. And the determination of sex is dependent on the males as they are the only ones who carry the Y chromosome. We will prove this using the genetic diagram as shown. As can be seen the probability of being male or female is equal. That's all for today. Thank you for the effort to learn with me. Stay tuned for more interesting lessons. See you next time. Bye-bye.